What is pop culture? Pop culture is an ever-changing and abstract phenomenon created by the people's own design. Theorist and author John Fisk describes it as the ways in which people use, abuse, and subvert cultural commodities. These commodities, or products, are produced by a capitalist society and distributed to the masses. We, the masses, use and manipulate these products in a rebellious effort to create meaning in our rather mundane and influenced lifestyles. This is pop culture. cultural commodities. Well, look around you. Look at your cell phone. Did you need the latest model of the iPhone or were you influenced by external sources? Did your previous laptop not complete all of the functions needed? Or were you influenced to buy it by desirable ads, upgraded features, and peers who had similar products? We have been conditioned by an industrialized society to be insatiable. The industry does not want you to be satisfied with what you have because that would mean that they can't profit off of what you lack. This is what Fisk is describing in his Commodities and Culture Theory. But wait, to really understand pop culture, we must first understand where it derives from. Culture plays a huge role in defining this phenomenon, as it's at the very heart of it all. It defines us. It influences our values, our beliefs, our lifestyle choices. Take Utah, for example. Our dichotic culture here is much different from that of Californians, where self-expression and liberation is celebrated. Here in Utah, you find a stricter scrutiny when it comes to expressing yourself in any form other than the norm. The main idea here is how people from contrasting cultures use industrial commodities differently to generate meanings, messages, and norms. In Fisk's text, Commodities of Culture, he directly relates pop culture to mass culture, which is the creation and distribution of these industrialized commodities. He acknowledges that it's all an effort to keep the masses targetable, marketable, and profitable. However, there is hope. Rather than focusing on this manipulation of the masses, we want to focus on the manipulation of the commodities, what the people make of these products, the meanings and messages created. Looking at pop culture through a different lens, theorist Debord takes a more cynical approach in his analysis society of the spectacle. He believes that these commodities are twisting our reality into an unrecognizable state, both encouraging and enabling a society of falsehoods. Although this theory was created in 1967, it has only become more applicable in today's society with the rise of social media. In the words of DeBoer, the spectacle inherits the weakness of Western philosophical project. It does not realize philosophy, it philosophizes reality, reducing everyone's concrete life to a universe of speculation. What he means by this is that we, as a society, are so focused on maintaining the false identities we procure, the value placed on them, that it ultimately leads to the loss of genuine growth and gain. This speculation, taking away from our true identity, is making us slowly fall into a state of falsely portrayed lifestyles in order to distract us from our mundane reality. And a great occasion is somehow spoiled for us unless photographed. And to read about it the next day in the newspaper is oddly more fun for us than the original event. This is a disaster. Um, do you have social...
social media. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I do. Yes. Yes. Do you think social media accurately represents who we are as individuals? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Mostly no. No, I don't. No. So why then do we strive so hard to keep up with the Joneses? Why do we put so much effort into maintaining this fabricated image for a society? If you were on vacation and you lost access to this fabricated image, does that mean those experiences count less? <laughs> I believe they would count more.